Bishop Sycamore. Have you have you seen this story? Is this the IMG stuff? This is the IMG stuff. Bishop Sycamore played IMG on Sunday on ESPN, and they told ESPN that they had multiple D1 prospects that have big-time FBS offers, etc. They missed multiple meetings leading up to the game. ESPN could not verify that any of their players had any kind of offers whatsoever. The head coach has an arrest warrant out for him. They played on Sunday after they played on Friday. There's a website that's set up for this high school, but it's basically a blog. The The details that are coming out about this are some of the most ridiculous things I've ever read in my life. It is just ridiculous. There's stories going around about how some of the players are actually like Juco dropouts, and they're not actually high school players. I... Like, they completely conned ESPN into this game. Now, ESPN, they they use a third party, like Paragon Sports, something like that, to gather up these games and schedule these games for ESPN to showcase recruits, right? And IMG, anytime you put IMG on, they got 15 D1 prospects that are coming into college next year, right? Sure. It's a It is a football factory that also is a school. And they've done a very good job of building it up, right? Because they recruit from across the country. Kids from everywhere go down to Florida and play at IMG. And that's that's why they are constantly winning national championships. That's why they do all this stuff. But this was really, really weird. Basically, it's not a team. Like, it's, it, it's just a bunch of... The way that it read off to me initially was, this is a bunch of guys that could not make their own high school team so somebody started up and is allowing them to, I guess, pay to play or something and is allowing them to go around and somehow they have scheduled a national schedule. They have games in Nevada, in New Jersey, in Ohio, in Florida, in like all these different places where they're going to play. They don't have a single home game. And nobody thought to even look this up to even see if it would like it, it's mind blowing to me that this is even a possibility Nowadays, because everything is on the internet, and yet somehow these guys are not. I uh, I am curious your thoughts on the fifty eight to nothing IMG win, where the ESPN broadcasters were completely crapping on the coaches. On the, hey, by the way, so the coach wouldn't even let them do a running clock in the game. Like basically, he wanted as much ESPN time for this bunch of dudes, even though they were down like forty something to nothing at that point. He didn't want to run a clock. He wanted it to just do what it does, and and we want as much time on ESPN as possible. And their quarterback was getting killed. Like they, the fact that they played it two days before this, not even forty eight hours. It was Friday night and then Sunday afternoon. I have no idea how this escapes. Like somebody has to be fired for this, right? It, it, we got to figure out what this thing is so you can judge it properly. This is the issue. Is it a school or is it just a bunch of people? Are we going to have any type of fraud issues? I, I have no idea what's going on. Like in baseball, you're only allowed to pitch so many innings, right? In, yeah. a, in like a certain window of time. Is there any kind of bylaws in high school football that says you're not allowed to play two games back to back like this? I, I, I mean, because we're we're in the world of player safety and things of that nature, there has to be some type of there has to be more than just incompetency in people not vetting this place. Yeah. The other thing is, is what are these people making off of it? Yeah, that's that's the question, right? So uh, the article over at the Athletic said, uh, "Let's see, there's a it's the coach that has created two schools out of. Let's see, there's a coach who has now created two schools from thin air and keeps leaving a trail of unpaid bills. Like it says, there was a super team run by a conglomerate that had canceled on that coach in 2018 because officials feared his team was not legitimate, but then played him in 2020 anyway." Like, IMG played these guys last year. There was the guy who orchestrates matchups on the side whose day job is VP of sales at Billboard, the publication that charts the biggest hits in music. There was the marketing company president who was the first person to put LeBron James and Tim Tebow on national television. 
There was the TV network that trusted the package it had bought would make for compelling viewing, but didn't bother to do any due diligence leading into a game it ultimately would bear the brunt of criticism for airing. And some of the criticism came from ESPN's own broadcast crew of Anish Shroff and Tom Luganville. I mean, this is... This, I don't even know... Is is a joke. It is a joke. I think I think there are people that are going to go to jail for this. You're worried about people getting fired for this. I think there are people that are going to jail for this. Uh, probably so. But like, how how has it not been picked up by anybody until ESPN actually aired it? Like, why why are people scheduling a team <clears throat> from a high school that doesn't exist? Like, this is apparently going. They went went six last year. They played six games last year and got stomped. And nobody bothered to actually look into whether or not this is a school like were they just looking for home games yeah i mean that's it i think i think somehow this team is even though they're not very good nationally recognized and so the other nationally recognized teams that's why i want to know who's are people cutting them checks did img cut them a check to play them when they go off to nevada are are those schools cutting them checks and where's that money going I mean, that's, I mean, it, I have no idea where it would be going. Like, I, I just, I, I'm reading, I read through this story and I get more and more confused, right? Like, it, it says, when IMG approached Maimon looking for a game, he said Bishop Sycamore was the only program in Ohio that wanted to play them. It says, the Blue Blood Ohio programs like St. Ed's and St. Ignatius, none of them stepped up to play this game. You can't blame Bishop Sycamore for doing that. They're the only ones who had courage to do so. Uh, they should be rewarded, not freaking lambasted. I, but I, All right. Some of, this, some of this I'm willing to overlook as, as just not that big of a deal. The other part is, I mean, if you've got JUCO players playing with your high school team, that's, then we've got a problem. Yeah. Because at the high school level, you are dealing with the difference between a year or two is massive. And now you, now you do have player safety issues. Yeah, so they so here's the other part of this. It says, the most curious and troubling part of Bishop Sycamore's slate is the game that does not appear on the schedule. This is the player safety issue that we were talking about. The school lists its season opener as a game against Arch, uh, Archbishop Hoban in Akron, Ohio. That game was played August 19th, and Archbishop Hoban... Won 38 to nothing. The next scheduled game on the schedule was Sunday's matchup with IMG Academy. But Bishop Sycamore also played a game Friday against Stowe Rocks High in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania that does not appear on any schedule. Stowe Rocks won that game 19 to 7. Johnson then told the Athletic that Bishop Sycamore fields multiple teams. The issue there is even if you do field multiple teams, there is video of the same players playing in that game on Friday that played on yep. Sunday. Yep. This is a problem. Like this is, I, I just well, like I said, I think I think you're dealing with some money issue stuff. That's what's going to end up taking them down. That's what always takes people down. Is no one you just follow the money, follow the money, you find the problems. If you've got a what seems to be a bogus school fielding multiple teams, I'm I'm telling you, you're doing that because somebody is raking money in. Yeah. Yes, 100%. Like, I, I, I don't... Th- this is all... It's a scam. It's all a scam. It's all money. It's, it's somebody... Like, Paragon Sports is is paying these schools. And what's crazy, like, Bishop Sycamore does not have a home stadium. So this was played in Ohio, but... but they're, just all, they're just going on the road. But, it, but it's all just... But IMG is from Florida. Like, it, it would make sense if... But this was like a kickoff classic kind of thing. So they just rented a stadium yep. and put these teams in it and sold tickets to go see basically IMG, I guess. I Like, this is... This is where it gets to be a little bit of an issue when... You remember all those years ago, ESPN started broadcasting high school football games to showcase, like, the premier recruits in the country. Right, yes. Tim Tebow, all that kind of stuff. And it kind of started with Two Days, which was the MTV show that actually had uh, uh, Rush Probst and Jeremy Pruitt was like his defense coordinator and so forth and so on. Like, people really got into high school football on a national level. So ESPN started trying to show it. Think about the number of high school teams that you have and then trying to, like, all the logistics that are involved with trying to broadcast a live high school football game 
on ESPN, and then the contracts and the money that you would have to pay the schools to be able to showcase them. It's that, like you, we we had to have known this at some point that somebody was going to try and rig the system. Rigging the system is one thing, but I would think it would be rigging the system to make sure the the blue bloods keep getting on TV or something of that nature. Creating a fake school. Yeah, so that you can get what fifty grand that's, from ESPN yeah, or something. Like. That's that's a different. This is a different ball game here. If if this is not a real school, if they don't have a physical address, a physical location, like if they don't have a board, if they don't, if this isn't a school, then what are we doing? Yeah how how are you allowing high school teams to play this quote unquote school? Yes, I, that's a that's a question that needs to be answered. Yes, I cannot wait to see what ends up coming out of this because everybody whiffed on it. Like everybody across the board whiffed on it. Yep. The broadcasters that are trying to prep for the game could not get them on the phone, could not get a roster, could not like they, they just went into a blind. They had no, like didn't even know what to talk about. So in that situation, it's like, what? I don't even know how you how you talk about a game where you have no information about one of the teams. But hang on now, if you're not going to be given that information, then then you got to cancel the game. You've got to cancel yeah. the television. You, listen, y'all can play the game. We're not putting it on ESPN. But at some point in time, some program director has to step up and say something is fishy here. If they're not giving us access to cover the game properly, then we we, we can't it. go out there blind. That that's not okay. This is not okay. I agree 100%. 100%. Let's see. Andy Staples uh, just tweeted or retweeted Johnson Central Athletics. Friday's match versus Bishop Sycamore has been canceled. Uh, Johnson Central is currently seeking an opponent for Friday's open. Okay, so they're starting to cancel the games against Bishop Sycamore now. That's weird. That's. It, I mean, it's, it's not weird. We totally expect it, but... I think, I think the jig is up now. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.